Peace God, this is Apostle Glenda Phillips Lee, and today I will be presenting to you True Family Values, God's Original Ideal. We bless God for you guys joining me today, and we thank God for this teaching. Education is very important in this season and time. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So again, welcome. Come on in the room and let's see what God is saying. There's five sessions. There's uh, session one, God's original ideal. Session two, ideal marriage and family. Session three, what went wrong. Session four, restoration of marriage and family. And session five, the blessing of marriage. Today I will be going over session one, God's original ideal. What was God's original ideal for mankind? I want you to think about that for a minute. What do you believe that God's original ideal for mankind was? Let's turn to the scriptures. After the creation of all things, God created Adam and Eve in his own image. Genesis 1, 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Then God gave Adam and Eve the responsibility to fulfill the three great blessings. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Genesis 1.28. Now let's look at the three great blessings. The first blessing was be fruitful. The second blessing was multiply. And the third blessing was have dominion. When we look at the purpose of life, we see God's plan with the three great blessings. You see God, then the mind and the body, once they come into the oneness, it produces a mature person. Then also you see God, that mature man and that mature woman coming together and you have a harmonious family. And then you have God and that harmonious family and nature coming together and you have this harmonious world. So the first blessing, fruitfulness, means mature. Multiply is family, and dominion is authority of the world. Now, when we look at the first blessing, be fruitful, we look at Genesis 1, 28 again, and it says, then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful. The first blessing, again, be fruitful, means spiritual maturity. Again, God, the mind and body coming together, producing a mature person. The first blessing, be fruitful, according to Reverend Sun Young Moon, humankind has been looking for maturity. And we have to know why man and woman had to wait to become mature before having a family. It is necessary because our ability to love requires a period of growth. Can you agree with me? Amen. This is what Reverend Moon says. Our um, ability to love requires a period of growth. Amen. We know that a child can love his parent. A parent can love the child. Amen. But when that child matures and, and become an adult, that child has to go through the growth formation to be able to love another individual as a mate and also as a friend. Relationship is very important. Now, the first blessing to be fruitful for a person who is mature is fully ripe and is in a state of perfection. And it doesn't mean never to make a mistake or mathematical or technical error. It means to have a mature heart of love and live for the sake of others. Perfection is a result of natural growth, free from sin. This is the meaning of the blessing, be fruitful. 
Jesus said we have to become perfect. Matthew uh, 5, 48. Therefore, you shall be perfect because as your heavenly father in heaven is perfect. Again, we're back to fruitfulness, maturity, our individual perfection. You got the mind, the body becoming one and this becoming um, mature in character and in heart may allows you to become one with God. Again, look, you see God, you see the mind and the body coming into oneness or agreement. It develops and produces a mature person. Words and deeds also become one, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. This is what mind and body um, becoming one means, Gen, uh, James 1 22. First John 3 18 says, Let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth, mind and body becoming one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. If you notice, this is Matthew 7, 21, and it's in red letters. In the Holy Scriptures, anything that is in red letters is the words of Jesus himself and must be taken very seriously. I find that when we read that and stick to that which is in red letters, there's no question about the um, understanding or the doctrine. This mind and body unison in 2 Peter 1, 5 and 7 says, For this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly love. Brotherly affection and brotherly love and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of your Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter 5, 58. Reverend Moon said the perfect individual is one in whom the mind and body are completely one through the eternal giving and receiving of love, having matured according to the form of love that God originally created. Now, a person maturing through love is like a bud growing into the fruit. If a person reaches the state of eternal mind and body unity, he or she can see and understand the whole world. There are all of heaven and earth resonates in this understanding. So when our body resonates in perfect unity with a perfect mind, we can connect to everything. Amen. And all you get and get understanding when you know how things work. We can never hear the sound of the universe moving in proportion to that sound. We could even, I'm sorry, we could even hear the sound of the universe moving in proportion to that sound. Our laughter bursts forth and our joy explodes. When we arrive on that plane, we could connect infinitely to that superlative power, the power of the ideal of creation. You guys should really be excited now. Amen. Jesus said we are to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. So this is becoming mature in character and in heart. Matthew 22, 36 to 40, he said, teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your mind, your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on those, these two commandments. Here we are again. Words in red. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44 and 45. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and, pers and uh, persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Amen. How many times we want to get back at our enemies and we want to curse them. Amen. That, that, um curses us. Amen. And we want to hate those 
that that do us any um, injustice. Injustice, but God says, in spite of all of that, Amen. Through Christ Jesus, that we are to love them, Amen. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall we forgive my? Shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times 70. Matthew 18, 22. You see, sacrificial love is to give and forget how much one has given. God has been given and sacrificing for humankind and then forgetting how much he gave, how much he sacrificed. This is why Jesus said, when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Matthew 6, 3. Everyone also says, if you give expecting something in return, you are not a real owner of love. If you give and then forget how much you gain, you could be an eternal person of love. Amen? Because love, that's what it covers, multitude of sin. So it's an imperative that we become mature in character and in heart. So to walk the path of love, you need to serve and sacrifice for others. Without serving and sacrificing, your love cannot grow. Although you may have a capacity to love that rates of 10, if you sacrifice and serve, that capacity can grow to 100, 1,000, and even 10,000. Are we helping anyone? Let's become one with God. Jesus said he and his father are one. John 10, 30, I and my father are one. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? And the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Amen. Remember, said Jesus said, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Here he's confessing that, hey, God lives in me. Amen. How many of us can truly say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world? Amen. John 14, 10. Jesus said he was one with the Father, and we too ought to become one with his Father also. John 14, uh, 20, at that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Amen. We're so excited about that day. Amen. John 17, 21, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you and me, you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Hallelujah. This is Jesus speaking. Isn't, wouldn't it be a great testimony if the world could acknowledge, amen, that we all are children of God, sit from God, amen, set aside purpose, amen, to do such an awesome work. Hallelujah. What a day of harmony that will be. And that will be very soon. Amen. Jesus said that he was one with his father and we are to become one with his father also. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Psalms 82, 6 says, I said, you are God's and all of you are children of the most high. Amen. Every tree testifies, every fruit testifies to the tree. Amen. If you are an orange, you're going to testify to the orange tree. If you are an apple, you're going to testify to the apple tree. Amen. So if you are a child of God, you should test testify to our heavenly parent or your heavenly parent. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you produce wickedness, amen, you are testifying to your father, the devil. Jesus answered them and said, this is not written in your law. I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. John 10, 34 and 35. Amen. So the individual perfection is the mind and body becoming one. Then you become mature in character and in heart and you becoming one with God. So the first blessing, being fruitful, Jesus fulfilled the first blessing by achieving perfection. Amen. It was through suffering that he learned obedience. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Colossians 1.15. Who is Jesus? Jesus said that he and God were 
one body. Furthermore, he was the son of God, specifically the only begotten son. Amen. We know he was the firstborn of many brethren. Amen. But he had a special position with God. He was the only one that God had chose to do a, a particular assignment. Jesus is the son of God simply because he was perfectly united with God in will and in heart. Bless God. So if you become united with God, Amen. In will and in heart, it positions you that you too can become begotten. You're on a special assignment from God. Hallelujah. So because of that, this oneness Jesus Christ could willingly die for the rest of the world. How can you become the true sons and daughters of Christ? By becoming perfectly one with Christ, one with his spirit and one with his heart. It cannot be done outside of Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus himself had to grow and to become perfect by being obedient. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who believe in Jesus in uh, Hebrew 5, 8 and 9 was the author of eternal salvation. No one in history had offered eternal salvation, amen, but Jesus. What is it that God has called you to do that makes you unique from all the world? This shows how big our God is, amen. There was only one person, amen, that created, well, two brothers, the right brothers, amen. They were the first to fly, but it was one person that created that airplane, Amen. What are you going to create? What are you going to do for God? Hallelujah. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. When your ways please the Lord, he may even your enemies to be at peace with you. Now, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. Luke 2, 40. Jesus is asking us to become fruitful also to him who overcomes. He said, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Revelations 3.21. For whom we foreknew, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. Romans 1, excuse me, Romans 8, 29. Again, let's look back at uh, the first lesson, being fruitful, coming into uh, your individual maturity. Amen, God. Again, your mind and your body coming into the oneness according to the word, the will, the purpose, and the plan of God, and you presenting yourself before God and the world as a mature person. So now let's look at the second blessing. The second blessing is multiply. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Multiply is to increase in numbers, Genesis 1, 28. Amen. You got God. You got that mature person, that person that has been fruitful, that mature man and woman. Amen. They come together. Amen. And they produce this um, harmonious family. Amen. That's a family that is centered on God, ready and able to attend God in all things. It's a beautiful looking family, right? God created every being in a pair system in his image. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, creating him male and female, created he them. That's Genesis 1, 27. Therefore, a man and a woman are to become together. To Therefore, a man and a woman are to come together to complete God's image. This is a question, why do we marry? Dr. Hart John Moon, we marry in order to resemble God. God exists as a being of dual characteristics. Thus, husband and wife, 
together more fully reflect God's original nature. In this second blessing of multiplication, there shall afford, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So Jesus said, haven't you read? He replied that in the beginning or at the beginning, the creature made them male, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. We used to say, put asunder. Amen. Matthew 19, 4 and 6. A fully matured man and a fully matured woman will become husband and wife after having received the blessing of marriage from God because the true image of God have children and establish God's lineage of generations. Amen. When they became 16 and 17 or 18, Adam and Eve would naturally start caring about the opposite sex. Just as when flowers bloom and a man and a woman are intoxicated by their fragrance, when they reached adolescence, Adam and Eve began to think about the opposite sex. We've all been children before, amen, and we know when we became interested, amen, in the opposite sex. In the heart of man, there's a woman whom God loves, and also in the heart of this woman who is man's object partner. There's also a man loved by God. When they come to praise each other, God will watch and feel happy and the whole creation will also feel joy. Amen. This is Reverend Moon. Amen. Teaching. Now we can agree. Amen. Because when you see a happy couple together, a beautiful family together, automatically your heart begins to rejoice and leap. Amen. You have God, you have this mature man and this mature woman, and then you have this harmonious family. So the last blessing, the third blessing, is have dominion, power, and authority. Amen. Then God blessed them and God said to them, have dominion, control over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Genesis 1.28. God, you got this harmonious people, amen, these harmonious families, and then you join them together with nature, amen, and here this world becomes beautiful, a harmonious world. Reverend Moon says, perfected man and a perfected woman will have dominion over all creations, including angels with the love and the principle with which God created all creation. Perfected man and perfected woman will become the owners of the universe and return joy to God. Bless God. The third blessing is that human beings should create the kingdom of heaven on earth where they would not experience any inconvenience or lack amid the environment that God bestowed upon them. Amen. So in God's presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Again, when your ways please the Lord, he's going to make even your enemies to be at peace with you. And also... The Bible says, if you listen diligently to these things, amen, God says that I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. I'm going to make you above and not beneath. I'm going to make you the lender and not the bar. You'll be blessed in the city and in the field. This is the time and period when God perfects what concerns you. God who is the original being of true love. Amen. Because God is love. He created human beings as his object partner of true love. He wanted them to become perfected beings of true love, realize the ideal of true love as husband and wife, and create the environment of the kingdom of heaven. That's Reverend Moons. Now let's look at God's kingdom. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. So what is the kingdom? The kingdom of God is righteousness. The kingdom of God is peace. And the kingdom of God is joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Being led by God, being a providential instrument 
for God himself. Let's look at this beautiful picture. Can about creation. Students learning. Let's look at the universe. It's a beautiful picture, you know, it's my heart. Looks like Africa to me. So God's desire for an ideal world, amen, is to have dominion, amen. The world, God's dwelling place, one family under God, having a family centered on God's ideal, his will, and science advances for God's ideal world. Food, all families will have enough food, amen, eradicate poverty and hunger throughout the world. Creation, taken care of by God's family with God's love and God's principle. The wealth, all families will have prosperity and happiness. Is this possible? Yes, it's possible. How? That because one, if we're in God's will and he perfects what concerns us, whatever we touch prospers. Amen. Our communication, the message of goodness, beauty, and truth. Amen. And the government, God's families, will then govern with goodness and righteousness. We will show what it is that good and acceptable will of the Father. Look at the economy. Advances for God's ideal world for all families. Amen. Having all things in common. Look at the arts. Gives joy to God and humanity through the expression of love and beauty. Third blessing, have a dominion, looking at God's kingdom. If Adam and Eve had become God's embodiment, we would have dwelt within their hearts. He would have dwelt within their hearts, reigning over earth and heaven, the physical world and the spirit world. Look at this. Look at it clearly. If Adam and Eve had become one with God because of their disobedience, they were separated from God. Amen. And then they began to produce. Amen. After that disobedience, that's how Cain came into play and Cain slew Abel. Amen. Cain represented the disobedience of, uh, of his parents, of their, his parents, and Abel represented God. Amen. Hallelujah. And what God said, if you do good, I'll accept your sacrifices. He was talking to Cain. But he said, if you do not good, sin lieth at the door. When we talk about sin, sin is going against heaven's law. Anything that God sets up as a no-no, amen, anything that's against your conscience becomes sin. Hallelujah. We thank God for you every moment. The sovereignty would have been not only God, but also Adam and Eve. So hence, they would have expanded God's kingdom, the kingdom of peace on earth. So now let's look at the purpose of life. This is what we've all asked. Lord, what is my purpose? What am I here to do? What will bring you joy? Amen. So God's plan is the three great blessings. God wants our mind and body to come together, that we produce, amen, this mature individual that can not only bring glory and joy to God, but to someone else. So now you have a mature man and a mature woman coming together, amen, producing this harmonious harmonious uh, family, amen. And then you have God in this family that's giving God glory, that's praising God, that's pleasing in his eyes, amen. And it mixes in nature, amen, and those things that were created by him and then the world, amen, become harmonious, amen. So be fruitful, mature, multiply, have a great family centered on God and then have dominion, control, and authority. Hallelujah. Again, my name is Apostle Glenda Phillips Lee, and I'm loving you enough to tell you the truth. I want to thank you for your participation today in our True Family Values Ministry. I give God all the glory. If you have any questions, you can contact me, the ACLC, Connecticut State Leader, at 347-777-3769. Have a blessed day.